Eric Darling here. Um, <clears throat> still, still darlinging the data, as far as I know. Um, no, <clears throat> haven't quite uh, had any acquisition offers lately, so you know. Who knows? Maybe someday. You know, uh, the dream of every founder is to be acquired, uh, and you know, go go start some new business. So, you know, any 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 day now, I'm sure. My my billions await. Uh, maybe I got into the wrong line of work for acquisitions, though. Who knows? Anyway, <clears throat> today's video, we are going to talk about uh, how you can tweak uh, change data capture tables so that you have a more human readable idea of uh, when rows ended up in your CDC tables. <clears throat> this can make all sorts of things easier. Now, look, there there are built in functions that can help you with this that do all sorts of wacky stuff with log sequence numbers the problem is they're complicated it's hard i don't like doing it uh i like things to be easy especially <clears throat> when my goal is to build bigger tasks around change data capture whether it's populating a data warehouse or you know doing some other data movement stuff this is one of this is one of my favorite tricks now <clears throat> For so many reasons, I absolutely loathe change tracking. Change tracking is one of the worst features that Microsoft has ever rolled into SQL Server. It is crap on wheels. Uh, I have seen it take down so many servers under high concurrency because what happens is you start to stack up these commit table weights, commit underscore table. It's, it, it's a monster. And when your server backs up on those commit table weights, there is no helping it you're going to flame out. Uh, again, change tracking, CT, is god-awful. If you turn it on, no one's going to want to help you. Um, I, don't e I don't even know if anyone at Microsoft is still work does anything with it. Um, I, think it's, I think it's abandonware at this point. Uh, change data capture is beautiful. It's wonderful. It is, it is my precious angel because change data capture works asynchronously. Um, you set up change data capture for a table or tables, and uh, as changes happen to those tables, uh, change data capture reads from the transaction log and moves that data into tables that you can actually see and do things with in your database, which is wonderful because you can do all sorts of neat stuff with those tables, including index them any way you want. You can add columns to them. You can, I don't know, let's see, you can, you can prune them out whenever you want. It's not like change tracking where you have to like do magic incantations and, and hope that whatever thing you run actually clears things out of the change tracking tables. It, again, change tracking, nightmare nuisance, change data capture, beautiful, wonderful angel. Uh, if you, if you ever, if you take one piece of advice from me and uh, you work at a company where someone is like, do we want change tracking or change data capture? Please say change data capture because, and, and save yourself all the problems in the world. Now, neither one of those things will tell you who changed something, right? That, that's, that's auditing. That's a completely separate thing. You just need to track what data changed. Change data capture is... Uh, what you should be using. So I've, uh, in, my, in my database called crap, and if you do not have a database called crap, I, I question whether you are a real database person because every database person needs a database called crap to do crap like this in. It's just the way it goes. So I've created a table called posts that mimics, make that formatted correctly, that mimics the post table in the Stack Overflow database. Uh, at least, you know, the public, publicly available copy of it. I'm sure the actual, you know, production copy of the post table is a nightmare. Um, <clears throat> and I've just stuck a thousand rows in there to make life easy um, because I, I felt like it because I don't, <laughs> I, don't, I don't need a huge table to show you this. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk through enabling change data capture for the crap database. Oh, that happened so quickly. That was nice. And then we're going to enable change data capture for the post table. And this will take a couple seconds to kick in because it does all sorts of stuff in the background and, well, you know. Uh, okay, well, whatever. Cool. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add a column to the post table that um, adds a... We're going to... Jeez. We're going to add a column to the change data capture instance for the post table called change time with a default of the sysdate time that will tell us exactly when data changed. 
So let's go and alter our table. That happened very quickly. That is lovely. Now, if we go and look in here, there will be nothing because we have, we have, not, had not, had any, we have not captured any data changes. There simply have been no data changes to capture. That's okay because we're going to make some changes. It's going to be great, right? It's going to be so much fun. So we're going to update the table and we're going to plug that in there and one row got affected. And now, wonderfully, magically, we're going to have data in our change data capture table. Look at all this great stuff. Now, if you were, if you were, you know, looking to, you know, use change data capture professionally with the built-in functions, uh, you could use the LSNs in here and whatever uh, to figure out exact, figure out like when things change. But, you know, that's, that's Bush League. Um, you you want to you want to do things in a way that people will actually you know be able to f you know use right? It's like um, it's like extended events. <laughs> like uh, Microsoft just made it as hard as possible to do anything, uh, and they're like, why doesn't anyone use this? Why do people still use Profile or why? Uh, well, I'll tell you why. Because you made it impossible. You jammed it full of XML. What, do you, what did you expect was going to happen when you made something as difficult as possible? You built something that was great for like, you know, like smart support engineers to use. You ruined it for normal people, much like using LSNs to track when things changed. But now if we scroll over a little bit in our data, in our, in our change data capture results, we will way over at the end here have this lovely column called change time with the exact time and date that something changed in. This gives away when I'm recording this, doesn't it? Crap, you've, you've got me. Now, if we make a different update to that table, we're gonna just add a thousand points onto the score here, and we revisit our, oh, that, didn't, that highlight did not go well at all, and we revisit the, the change data capture results. Now we have, some additional, uh, we have some additional data in there, and if we scroll over a little bit further, we will see that the change time column is now incremented to exactly when we made the change over here, right? So about a, this is about a minute and a half apart. So we see exactly what time something came in. This can be useful for all sorts of things. Like if you're the type of person who uses change data capture to push data to another source, or rather another destination, another target, uh, it's a lot easier to use this change time in your queries to figure out if this is new data that you need to change. Because in whatever process you do, you can say, last data movement was at this time. Is the change, data, is the change time column greater than this time? Yes, we move that data. Is it less than that? No, we don't touch it. No more futzing around with anything else. You can have a jolly old time moving your data over without having to worry too much about it. And so for these reasons, <clears throat> which I believe to be self-evident, change data capture is superior in absolutely every single way to change tracking. If you don't like it, uh, again, I've got the Delta Miles to come fight you. I'm happy to do it. So now we're going to finish this thing off by uh, turning off change data capture and for our table and database, because uh, if I don't, then every time I run SP who is active, I'll have some weird job running in the background that just makes things weird and confusing, and no one needs that. So there we go. I'm going to finish this video by saying thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you never use change tracking in your life. I hope you always opt to use change data capture instead. Uh, I should really start doing this stuff at the beginning of the video before everyone stops watching. But, uh, you know, if you like this video, I like, I like thumbs ups and I like comments. Uh, again, even mean comments because I do have the Delta Miles to come fight you. But uh, the, the, the still, you know, take, take your chances. Why not? Um, <laughs> if you uh, enjoy this type of SQL Server content, uh, you can subscribe to the channel and join now over 4,000 data darlings and their, their, their joyful bliss every time they get a notification that I, I, I publish a video. So you should do all three of those things, except, I don't know, maybe be nice. You could... You could, you could choose to be nice, right? What does what it people say? It costs nothing to be nice. I don't know if that's true. Sometimes it, it, it takes a physical, there's a physical cost to being nice. There's a physical toll on being nice. But other times, you know, it's cool. <laughs> it's fine. You know, tip your bartenders. <laughs> it's, it's basically my, be, be nice to your bartenders. I'm, I'm all, I'm, I, the, the people in the world who I am the nicest to are bartenders because uh, anyone who uh, just keeps bringing me drinks is best friend. So 
much like the way a dog will look at you when you give them a liver treat, uh, I, that's how I look at bartenders who bring me, bring me drinks. So that's, that's me, though. You might have your own kink. I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, uh, I'm going to get going. Apparently, I have a phone call starting in a few minutes, so I should probably, I should probably attend to that. Uh, that, that would be a client call, one of the lovely people who, who paid me money to do SQL Server Consulting so that I can keep recording these videos for free. If you find yourself in the market for a SQL Server Consultant to help you with performance or choosing between change tracking and change data capture, you know how to get in touch with me. Here I am. My rates are reasonable. Uh, thank you for watching. I'm going go, to go entertain someone for money now. That sounds, that sounds wronger than it actually is, but gosh darn it, it's the truth. All right, cool. Adios.